Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is in our midst. Good morning, Kalima. If I can ask anyone who's coming forward to put a candle to do it after my sermons. It's visually disruptive. I'm sorry. Thank you. Today I want to address a question. And uh, the question is a, a simple one, and it springs out of the epistle reading that we just heard from St. Paul's uh, second letter to the church in Corinth. Uh, the, the, the part I want to focus on is just one verse, and the verse reads as follows. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. I'm, I'm drawn to this verse because of sort of the, the stark contrast that it lays out, right, between earthen vessels, something very mundane, and the excellence of the power. What is this about? So the question I want to ask, uh, I want to answer today, which I alluded to a minute ago, is simply, what is, what is this verse trying to tell us? First of all, what is it specifically saying, right? And secondly, why would this matter to us? And uh, first I want to clarify two things. Uh, perhaps it's obvious, but the earthen vessel part, right? We have this treasure in earthen vessels, or it could be translated clay pots, that St. Paul is talking about is, is us. It's our physical bodies. Uh, as much as we, we might like to, to decorate ourselves up and put on cologne and wear our fancy clothing, ultimately the scripture is very clear that we started out as dust, Genesis 2-7, and the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground, and we are going to end up as dust, at least before the second coming of the Lord and the general resurrection. Genesis 3-19, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. So that's the, the earthen vessel part of this particular verse. We also hear in this verse about the excellence of the power. That the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. What is this referring to? Well, it seems to me that it's referring to the preceding verse, the one just before this where we hear about, quote, the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. I think that is the answer to the question. I think this verse is talking about how God has taken his exceeding excellence, right, which is most clearly seen in the face of Jesus Christ, and put it in our clay jars, right, us. So that's what St. Paul is telling us here, that for whatever reason, you and I are clay pots carrying within us the exceeding excellence of the knowledge of the glory of God. If nothing else, we could, we could pause here and simply say that that's quite a privilege for us. That being said, let's turn to the second half of the question, which uh, is about the meaning of this verse practically for us. <clears throat> I think this verse tells us something significant, both about God, something about the character of God, and I think it also tells us something significant about us and sort of why we exist, right? First, it tells us that God is not afraid to get his hands dirty, or to put it differently, as I once heard, God is not afraid to get a little gravy on his shoes. For me, one of the most powerful passages in Scripture about this exact point is in St. Paul's letter to the church in Philippi, where St. Paul sort of gives this quick cosmic overview of what Jesus Christ has done. He says, quote, let this, be, uh, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, now he's talking about him in heaven before he became man, 
being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, meaning he was willing to become a human, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a slave and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Now, as a parent of five, I'm often in situations where I am sitting comfortably on my couch or I'm doing something at the kitchen table and some insanity erupts somewhere in my house. And I've realized that I have two options in how to deal with this, fundamentally. Option number one, stay comfortably seated where I am and yell at the top of my voice for my kids to cut out whatever they're doing. Option number two is get up out of my seat, go to where the problem is, and address it face to face. Now let me ask you all a question. Raise your hand if you think option one is more effective, just sitting there and yelling. All right, raise your hand if you think option two is more effective, getting up, confronting the issue face to face. And of course the answer is option two. And God, God, God chose option two, right? He didn't throw salvation down from heaven, right, at a safe distance, sitting comfortably on his throne. Right? That's not how we were saved. <clears throat> Rather, he became a man, right? He took on everything we have. As St. Paul said in the passage I just read to the church in Philippi, even death, right? And through taking all of that on, he saved us. So that's point number one, that, that our God isn't a God who is afraid to get dirty. That being said, what does this verse say about us? What does it say about us? I would put it this way. There is more to us than us. There is more to us than us. And the more is that treasure that we carry within us, right? We have this treasure in earthen vessels. I mentioned earlier that we came from dust and we are going to return to dust, right? Referencing uh, chapter, uh, Genesis 2 and 3. But from Genesis 2, after God forms man from the dust, it says something very important that I intentionally didn't read, but I will read now. Genesis 2, 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, we covered that, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Nowhere else in the creation story do we hear this, right? We don't hear it about the trees, or the fish, or the cattle, or the birds, or the stars. For none of these things does, God say, does the scripture tell us that God breathed into their nostrils the breath of life. Man is unique, right? Man is truly a uniquely created creature to bear the image of God in him. That's why we are. And, and no other feature in creation, right? No plants, no animals, nothing else can claim that. Which also means that this earthen vessel, right? My body, this clay pot, is not the point, right? The point, it's not an end in itself, I should say. Just like if we might have a, maybe we have a ceramic jar in our house where we take off our jewelry at the end of the day and we put it in that jar. Or maybe we have a really nice suit and we have a hanger and we take the hanger and we put the suit on the hanger, right? We all know that the hanger and the jar are just sort of, they're not, they're, they're necessary, right? But they're not critical, they're not the point, right? The point is the jewelry and the suit, right? They are the point, right? So too with God. The point of us is God, right? The God in us. Which is why we could note just four verses after the one that we're focusing on right now. St. Paul says the following. For we uh, who live are always delivered to death for Christ's sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. Right? So what that says is, we die so that Jesus Christ can live in us. 
We, we shrink so that Jesus Christ can grow in us. St. John the Baptist said it well in, in the beginning of the Gospel of John at the start of his ministry. He says, quote, he, he being Jesus, he must increase, but I must decrease. And that's, that's really the question that we have to ask ourselves today, each one of us. How much room am I really willing to give over to God in my life, right? Or to put it differently, over how much of my life am I willing to have God be completely in charge? How much am I willing to die so that our Lord Jesus Christ can live in me? Or, or am I clutching on to my clay pot, right? As tight as I can, like the fate of the whole world depends on it. Am I willing to give my marriage to God? Am I willing to give my children and their lives and their futures to God? Am I willing to give my career to God? Am I willing to give my, my time? Am I willing to give my treasure to God? Am I willing to have Him be sovereign over all of those things in my life? Am I willing to surrender control so that God can be in control? To use another image, you can't have two people steering a car at the same time, right? So the question I have is, who's at the wheel in your life? So that's what I think St. Paul is getting at here today. That God loves us so much that he's willing to put his infinitely valuable treasure in our clay pots. And that having this treasure, which we do, we are called to shrink, right? To disappear so that God can appear, right? To, to decrease so that God can increase. The saints around us, we look on the walls, the saints have done it, right? That's what it means to be a saint. We also can do it, brothers and sisters. May our Lord grant us the humility and love and courage required to shrink the clay pot to let God's light shine in and through us. Amen. Please rise.